Hello and welcome back to the Squirrel Heat Choo- There. Choo Tube. Choo Tube. Ah. Hello and welcome back to the Squirrel Heat YouTube channel. Apologies for being away for so, so long after- I say so, so long, it's only been a couple of days. But, since doing the review for the Liverpool um, game again at the weekend, just have not been well enough at all to do any videos at all. Um, I said at all too many times now. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm still not the best, but I can actually speak right now, which is uh, which is always a bonus, I suppose. Being able to talk is is quite something when you're making a video. Um, so yes, basically, I've just been ill all week to a point where I actually did pretty much lose my voice on most days, um, and was just not in any any condition to do any videos whatsoever. It's why the gaming videos have pretty much stopped this week and so have the Premier League um, videos as well. Um, so, what I'm going to do with the Premier League review from the weekend just gone uh, and Monday Night Football and such like that as well is when I do the re uh, preview this weekend, so after I do this video, I'm going to throw in how each team sort of did at the weekend and stuff like that as well. Um, and so we kind of do get the review there, but yeah, I'm just mixing. going to mix it in with all that sort of stuff. And then we'll hopefully be up to date and I can be back firing, back into good health after this week, after hopefully tomorrow and obviously back into the full flow of doing videos. But apologies for that, first of all, anyway. So thanks for your patience if you have stuck around. Friday Night Football, we are kicking off with Chelsea versus Liverpool, a very important match for both teams. It's going to be, I think, I think it's got the potential to be epic. It's got the potential to equal each other out, though. Um... I do think they. I think there's going to be goals. I don't think this is going to be a goalless thing. I, I, I don't think Liverpool are going to be uh, involved in a goalless game throughout the, pretty much the whole season. I just don't think that's going to happen. In the fact that we're either going to score them or we're either going to concede them. There's just no two ways about it. Okay. Um, so uh, just and also for this video, I'm also using uh, an app called uh, the, an app. It's a website called this11.com. Not a it's not a sponsored video, but it's a nice little tool um, that's been able to let me uh, have a look at both teams pretty much. And what I've got up on here on the screen for you here is basically how both teams lined up in their previous matches. So Chelsea, this is how they pretty much lined up um, according to Sky Sports. This is how they lined up um, against. Uh, bloody hell, against who? Against Swansea. Um, this is how they lined up then. Similar sort of, I mean, obviously that will have morphed throughout the game um, when they were playing against Swansea. And then this is how we lined up against Leicester at the weekend as well. And we got a beautiful 4-1 victory for it. Um, so let's have a look, obviously, at Chelsea. Chelsea have got a very strong lineup Now, one change that we do have to make straight away, obviously, is this one right here. John Terry getting injured at the weekend. Um, so what we're going to do here is what we've been told is Terry will be coming out so he can go over there and I think David Luiz will be coming in and making his re-debut um, for Chelsea and it's an interesting one as well obviously um, David Luiz coming back to Chelsea after I think a 30 plus million bid um, and they secured his services again can be good in defence I've still always personally seen him as a bit more of a I I for some reason, I see him as a bit more of a box-to-box -box midfielder. Now, admittedly, I haven't really been able to watch a lot of David Luiz's work when he was over in PSG because I just I didn't have the channels. <laughs> it was one of those things. I can seek out a lot of things, but I just didn't have the channels or the ways of getting to watch the French League. And I wasn't greatly interested in it anyway when there's like one or two teams dominating a league. I don't generally watch it unless I'm invested in a team for some reason. Um... So didn't really see, I don't know really how he's progressed. Obviously, he watched the 2014 uh, World Cup. Didn't put them in a very good light there. But you never know, he could have completely changed. I just still think, I, I always see David Luiz as a bit more of a box-to-box -box midfielder. Um, or even as, as a CDM, but not in the calibre or in the context of Kante, Matic, those sort of players and stuff like that. Oh, excuse me. Um, and I do realise, obviously, that Matic and... You know, these guys will probably be a bit more around this sort of area. I do, I've just kind of like cobbled it together myself. Just, you know, bear with me. <laughs> um, so, obviously, that's going to be one change that's got to be made straight away. Um, so, I do realize I'm now a substitute down <laughs> of what I'm predicting substitute wise, but never mind, because I don't really know that the substitutes that they would sort of make or, uh, uh, or all of their players anyway. Um, apologies if I'm not knowledgeable enough for you out there. Um, so, yes. 
David Luiz is going to be coming in with Gary Cahill. Now, obviously, Gary Cahill is going to be wanting to come back in, and obviously, he's going to be wanting to prove a bit more of a point after, like, after the unfortunate tackle that he went through uh, with Swansea um, when Leroy Fur just... Wow. I mean, if, if that tackle had gone against one of my our defenders, I would have been pissed off as well. I really would have. Um, with two tackles, basically. Basically, just had both of his Achilles heels um, clawed at. Ivanovic, as Piliqueta, pretty much, I would say, is probably dead set to go in. Kante, Matic, most likely, again, partnered in that midfield. Um, Oscar, possibly. I, I don't see why not. I think... Um, I think in the last game they played well enough, obviously to be, and the last couple of games as well. Chelsea are unbeaten this season, which is is unbelievable. Consistency straight away, and a complete contrast to where they were last season. Hazard looks reborn again. Willian, you know you're going to get quality from Willian, and the big man up top that I am is my biggest concern, especially again depending on what we put out in defence. Diego Costa, because Diego Costa, while he is being a bit more of a but he's been a bit more of a bully again. Um, he's also now backing it up with goals. He's winning games and he's taking losses into draws, which is what I've always said, is that if you have a team or players that can turn your draws into wins and your losses into draws, that's so important. And Diego Costa right now is doing that. Whether you like him or not, and I'm not a big fan of him like in terms of his personality and stuff like that, but as a footballer, unbelievable. That is what you need. That's that kind of aggression that you need, and it, and he's using it in the right way. Not like he was under Mourinho, where he'd possibly be pushing it a little bit too far. He's actually using that aggression very, very cleverly uh, at the moment, and he's getting away with some things, like when he got away with that slide and tackle um, against uh, Adrian uh, against West Ham, when he got away with that one a little bit, and then obviously he scores the key goal that gets them the win. Um, He's using it very cleverly, and you you kind of you don't have to admire it, but you've got to you know, if you had that in your team, you'd love it. I know I would. Uh, back even when we had like likes of Luis Suarez, although thankfully Costa's not biting people. <laughs> so Chelsea look dangerous everywhere. Sorry, and also Courtois in goal. It's just more of a shoe in, but he's he's always going to be there. Um, Kel Chelsea are dangerous in every part of the pitch. There's no denying that. They are very... Especially under Conte right now. Now, you look back when Conte at Juventus and he has those um, defensive stalwarts that were an absolute cornerstone of, of the way he built his teams. He looks like he's already being able to do that at Chelsea and that's pretty damn quick that he's been able to do that. Make them defensively solid but creative up top. Now, obviously, Chelsea aren't going to be blitzing teams just yet or they might not blitz teams. But they're getting solid, solid wins. They aren't looking overexposed in most matches. Yes, they had an unfortunate couple of incidents against Swansea where they were 2-1 down and they have to come back 2-2 and get a draw. That's fine. They've still picked up points. They've got 10 points out of 12 so far. They're doing very well. They're consistent. If you were to measure this that start of this season up against last season's hand over fist, this is massive improvement. Massive improvement already. Um, so the players look very reinvigorated. That manager looks like you would have to be invigorated by how he treat, by how he wants to get his message across. Because if you're not, he looks like the type of manager that will get you out of there so so fast. And especially referencing the substitutes that they've used in the last couple of uh, in the last couple of games. So most notably, we've got Batshuayi down here, who was a very good alternative to go up front. Now, obviously, it depends who you would take off on, depending on performance levels and such like that. Um, you could take pretty much anybody off, change a little bit of the formation. You can either go with Batshuayi coming up top with Costa, or if you if Costa's not performing, you can take Costa straight off, and then you can have him going up top here, or maybe dropping a little bit deeper because he's got a lot more pace, um, and he can drop a bit round here and start contributing, like, or picking up the ball with Hazard and William. And that front three, or front four, depending on how, you, how they would make their substitution would be absolutely unreal and then obviously here as well you've got Victor Moses now Victor Moses has been on so many different loans that now he looks like he's actually getting his shot and this could be also what happens with Quadrado when he comes back off loan after his loan spell I think I think he's on loan I'm not sure I might have got that one wrong but if he does come back to Chelsea again Victor Moses always looked like to me that he was never going to get a chance in this Chelsea team and now I think he's been on loan every season since 2012 
and he's been the likes of Liverpool, West Ham. Um, I can't remember where else he was. Might have been Stoke. Might have that one wrong. Um, but now he's getting his shot, and he's actually doing okay. He's doing pretty good, and now he seems like he can slot in. So if he wants to come in for like over here for William, Williams maybe not having a good game, or he might just be knackered. Bang! You put someone in like Moses in. He's making very clever, very clever um, substitutions and stuff like that. Things that are going to reinvigorate certain positions and get a bit more creativity and get the absolute maximum out of his team. Um, so everywhere they are, they're defensively solid. Courtois, you know, even with David Luiz in there, you're going to have this leadership of Cahill that's going to be so important to marshal this back line here. Especially then you've also got the vast experience again of Ivanovic, who didn't look like he was going to make it and stay in the Chelsea team after how he seemed like he was getting worse and worse and worse. And then all of a sudden now, he's gone back up. And that's quite a turnaround for Ivanovic. As Piliqueta, again, solid as a rock. And he's also very, you know, he's very good defensively. Can go forward as well. Same with Ivanovic. They can really get these things pushing upwards, like to link with the midfield, link with the midfield, link with the wingers and stuff like that. Then you've got this man here, Kante, who is making a difference already. And you can see the loss that Leicester have had since they've lost Kante, pairing up with the likes of Matic and Oscar and that, and running that midfield. And then obviously you don't really need to speak much more about the likes of Hazard and William Costa. We've already covered all that sort of stuff. They look exceptionally dangerous and we have a lot of things to look out for in this game. So what we're going to do is we're going to move straight on over to the Liverpool team. Now, this is the Liverpool team that was put out against Leicester. Now, obviously one of the main things that I would look at here is Lloris Carrius. Looks like he's going to be back in full fitness now. And it depends. There's two... Two ways of looking at it. Do you just slot him in for his debut in the Premier League and see how he gets on in a big, big match like this against two big teams and just see how he does because he's a new goalkeeper. He's recovered. He was on the bench last week um, against Leicester, which is very good signs. Obviously, he's back on the bench. He's ready to come on. He's ready to play. But Mignolet had a pretty good game. Does he now warrant, on a little bit of form, staying in goal? I'm not entirely sure. Me, I would like to try Carrius, and this is where I would go, obviously, with this one, is I would put Carrius in there, um, just because I, I really am desperate to see what he's like. I think that he's going to command a lot more in that... I think he's going to command his box a lot better. He's going to command his defence a lot better. He'll have a bit more better organisation. When you see little glimpses of him in our pre-season, he was very, very, very good, very solid, very calm and collected, and that's the only thing that worries me about Mignolet, is the fact that he is not calm, and you, I would not trust Mignolet to, to really run, like, I'm not confident with Mignolet being there, I'm just, I'm just not, and that's nothing against the guy, he just, he seems to flap so much, even, even against Leicester when Robert Huth had a, a header, Mignolet comes out to punch it, but he's got two defenders in front of him trying to head it as well, now a good goalkeeper, in my opinion, would have absolutely bellowed that that is my ball, bang, and you leave it for me. But even so, he doesn't do that. He doesn't have that commanding presence. That's why I want Carrius in there, because I think he will do that alongside the likes of Matip. Matip has been very, very cool, calm, collected, awesome in, in possession, awesome at getting the ball back, and he seems to read the game very well. For someone of his age, he has so, so much experience. It's, it's unbelievable. Now, the other thing that we had, obviously... Lovren had an injury, had a really, really bad eye injury during the week, and Lucas came in, did well, aside from obviously getting a beautiful, beautiful assist for Jamie Vardy. Fucking hell. Um, he did do quite well other than that, but he is going to be suspect in defence, and not against, the, against someone like Chelsea, just not who I would want in defence, and I don't think he would be in defence. So the first one coming out of my lineup, the second one coming out of my lineup, sorry, um, would be Lucas and coming in would be Lovren to partner Matip. Now I think that would be quite a good defence when they've been paired together. They look pretty solid so far. Um, now it depends. Again, I was very wary of who was going to be starting at left back. Now I do have. Um, oh no, he's not there. That's Coutinho. Now we have Moreno over here. Now you could put Moreno here, but for me, I'm going to stick with Milner. Milner would start for me, and because he did so well against, uh, he did really well against Leicester, very, very well. They've got a lot of pace in their team as well. Obviously, Vardy likes Musa and everyone like that. They've got a lot of pace, and he dealt with whatever was coming with him very, very well. A um, lot more solid, 
Moreno is a good option to bring on like end of the game, maybe 10, 15 minutes towards the end of the game if you've got it wrapped up. If not, you keep Milner on and he will just keep going. Klein, shooing, right back. No questions asked. I've got absolutely no problems with Klein so far this season. He's done exactly what he did last season. Doing better as well. He's getting up forward. He's linking the play between the mid, uh, between the midfield and also the winger in Mane and stuff like that. He's setting some moves up, getting himself about, being very, very important at linking the back to middle to front. And he's doing very well at it. Moving into midfield, obviously we had Henderson, Wijnaldum and Lallana. Lallana, and, <laughs> Lallana was awesome. I, I think someone's, uh, there was an article that said, are we about to see the prime years of Adam Lallana? And it was based off his England performance when he scored the goal. And I was like, I was a bit pensive. I was a bit, I don't think so. But maybe now, after his absolute rocket into the top left-hand corner um, against Leicester, maybe it could be. And it, you know what? It would be, it'd be overdue. Like, we're going to start maybe seeing the Lallana that we actually got from Southampton, who was an absolute beast. Wijnaldum has been getting some assists. He's come out and said that he wants to be getting some goals. We'd love you to be getting some goals, but as long as you're contributing, no problems whatsoever. It's when he goes missing, and this is what I'm going to worry about, is that if because we're going to be playing away uh, to Chelsea, is he going to go missing? I certainly hope not. I hope that that group can get behind him, get round him, and or he can just contribute just as much as he does when he played at home. Now, sometimes he hasn't played, he hasn't linked the play as well as he could do, um, as like Anfield, we've only had the one game there, but it's important for him, especially in the midfield, which is where this game could be won and lost. It's so important for Wayne Alden to contribute, along with Jordan Henderson, who I think, apart from his missed chance that he had against Leicester, had a very very good game as well. These types of performances we need from this midfield every single time. We need it all the time, and especially from your captain. When it's coming from Henderson and you're getting those sorts of passes, that pass over to Sturridge, who then obviously clipped it into Mane and got a nice chip goal over Schmeichel. These are the types of things that you need. You need that creativity from midfield. And if we get that, then I'm pretty, I'm confident that we can do some damage to Chelsea within that midfield. Then obviously we're looking at the front line as well. We've got Sadio Mane, definite shoeing. Sturridge, yes. And Firmino, yes. However... It does depend on a couple of things. Now, it do you go on... For me, I would go on form. And it, it sounds harsh. The two players that... You could do it a couple of ways, right? And this is, this is how we're going to do it. The reason I would go for that front three is purely because of how they all linked up on the day against Leicester. However, there is one way that you could switch it up. Now, if, you, if you're not confident in Wijnaldum, keep Lallana in there, keep Henderson in there, and you put maybe Coutinho in that number 10. Or you could put... Firmino, so let's have a look. So what you could do is I could take Wijnaldum out here, grab Coutinho, then you could maybe drop Lallana back here a little bit, or you could switch these two around, so like you could have Henderson. Or if you're going to have Henderson playing a little bit deeper as well, so you can almost come up with something a little bit like this, or, or whatever, you have Coutinho here, Firmino stay out there like he did. Um, and then obviously the crisscrossing between Firmino and Sturridge, and that front line as well, or... You could switch it again and do what we have been doing at the start of the season with Coutinho here. Firmino playing in behind. And Firmino playing in behind is dangerous because he he can he seems to operate a little bit better if he's behind a striker. Um, which was, again, evident from Hoffenheim, uh, where we got him from. That was kind of like the this sort of role that he played there. Scored a lot of goals, got a lot of assists as well. And he's, he's a very clever passer. Got good eyesight. Um... And he's got a very good eye for goal as well. Sturridge has been playing so, so well that he may not have been scoring goals. But man, you saw how he was connecting the play uh, against Leicester. And then obviously this man right here is our absolute live wire. Our difference maker. Our He's just, as much as, as Coutinho is our magician, he is just as much, if not a little bit more so right now. Coutinho obviously has been with us a lot longer, provided us with some good moments. But Mane is doing this every game. He is making us look dangerous every single game. To quote someone on Twitter who uh, said that Mane could be the best bit of business that we've ever done since Luis Suarez, that says everything. Because he just keeps going. He will not stop. He's absolutely magnificent. He's got such a good turn of pace. 
very very good technique he's not selfish he's not too selfish he's selfish enough to take the right opportunities instead of trying to go for something that's unrealistic it's been absolutely a brilliant start to his career only four games in this is going to be the fifth game in and i'm just loving how this four right here Firmino, Coutinho, Sturridge, Mane, that four, how they are continuing to combine together. And that's what that's something similar to how I would perhaps line up the team if I'm wanting to maximise our attacking opportunities in this game. Because, because Chelsea are that solid defensively and in that midfield area, we are going to need every creative element to try and break through that Chelsea defence and the Chelsea midfield as much as possible. We're going to have to try and stretch that defence as well, stretch the midfield, and I think that we could do that. Most likely, though, is you'll most likely see either Coutinho or Firmino. I doubt Henderson or Lallana would get dropped. It Or maybe it could be Lallana is the one that gets subbed, something like that. But you most likely will see Wijnaldum start and one of Lalana, Firmino, or Coutinho um, be dropped. But I'm not into again. You never know what's going to come up in terms of selection. But that is personally what I would go for. I think that would give us the best chance defensively in goal. I think it would be very, make us very, very hard to you know if we can keep possession a little bit and use that possession very well in the midfield. I think that could make us quite dangerous. And again, that front three or front four depending on how you want to look at it with Firmino, Coutinho, Sturridge, Mane. I just think it would make us so dangerous that if we can get the right opportunities, like we did against Leicester, like we have done in the past, like we did against Arsenal as well, even take into consideration the Barcelona game in pre-season and stuff like that as well. If we can do that, we can do some pretty good things. Chelsea, on the other hand, can do similar. They have the talent in their team. This is why I like looking at things in an unbiased way, to try and take out the fact the allegiances and obviously that my team is Liverpool but looking at their team as well when you've got the creativity the pace and the likes of Hazard and Willian Costa who's got power got deceptive pace as well and he's got that aggression natural side to him as well then you've got the steel of Matic and Kante and Kante can run for days as well as much as Henderson can run Kante could probably steamroll him every day of the week Oscar's a pretty good creative player as well then you've got the steel in their defence as well, and the goalkeeper. It makes it a hard one to predict. There's no question about it. For me, it does make it a very hard game to uh, to predict. The prediction that I'm going to go with, and it is based on the last two games, it would be so easy to go for a draw. It really, really would be. But for me, and it's a very, very bold prediction, but I'm, I'm quite confident that we can do it. I'm going to go for... Uh, <laughs> right, the prediction that I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for a Liverpool win and I'm going to go for a 3-2 victory. The same scoreline I predicted Leicester would be. And I'm only doing it because I think, A, I think yes, I think Chelsea will score goals. I think they will get, I, I just think they have too much um, quality in their team to not score goals. But I think we have the same as well. And I think our front four will just... I think that they will get opportunities. I think Louise could be caught napping. And Cahill is a very, very, very good defender. Is even better when he's alongside John Terry. Without John Terry there, this is going to be a test to see if Cahill can re can do it on his own. Is he going to be the captain on the night? And if so, is he going to, is he going to play like the Chelsea captain can? I don't know. But I'm hoping, this is what I'm hoping and this is what I think will happen in that we'll get the 3-2 victory. And I do think there's going to be maybe a couple of defensive mistakes in there. But there is every chance, and it's not a disclaimer, there's every chance it could go the other way. And Chelsea could get the victory, could also come out and be a score draw. But I don't see it being a nil-nil or anything like that. I think there will be goals in this. I am obviously looking for the Liverpool win, but this again could be one of those that goes either way and it could really start to cement this, the uh, the rest of the season so far and where each team is going to be going afterwards. It could set them on their ways and it could set a couple of steps back for the team that doesn't come off on the right end of the victory. Anyway, that is my prediction for Chelsea versus Liverpool. I hope you've enjoyed it using the website this11.com. You can go on there and you can use 
loads of different things on it. You can actually set up. You could, if you wanted to, you could really, you could really get quite into it. So you could draw arrow like so. As Pilar Quater, he's gonna like he's gonna run over here, and then you're gonna have Ivanovic. He's gonna run all the way over here. You know, you can do anything you want. Um, but <laughs> you can get right into your tactics and stuff. And I want to get into doing that sort of stuff when I really get my head around it. But I really wanted to use it. It was a lot of fun. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you let me know what your predictions are, just because I'm predicting a win isn't hopefully meaning that I'm slating Chelsea. And I really hope I'm not coming across that way. Um, it's just how I feel, how I think it's going to happen um, for us. And I think obviously just going off the last result as well against Swansea, not performing very well. Again, it could come in our favour. It, it might not because we know what Liverpool are like at times. So let me know what you think in the comments. Get your predictions down in the comments as well. I really would like to see what you um, think. Who do you think is going to score the goals? I'm not entirely sure who's going to score them because anybody can score them um, in our team sometimes and not the most uh, not the most obvious ones, I would say. But if you've enjoyed the video, please drop a like on the video. Apologies again for not getting the Premier League uh, review out this week, but hopefully you'll look out for the preview this week and you can catch up with it then. Subscribe if you're new around here. really helps out a lot and would make, uh, make a guy like me smile quite a bit. Always does. Um, there's lots more content coming, gaming stuff like that is going to be kicking back up, I say it every time, it's kicking back up, now that I've got the energy and hopefully less ills to deal with, we'll be getting that all up, so the three things there, if you can like, subscribe, comment your stuff down below, a big thank you to everyone so far that has stuck with us, and I'll catch you later, thanks very much for watching. <laughs>